for it. The Union flag is flying and we are racing for the Ford Water Trophy with the magnificent sound of all these 911s leaving the line. And it's a good getaway out front. The 99 of Quaith and Thorpe has hit the front of the field. Yeah, absolutely now the start and uh, the car that Mark Webber sharing with Bonamy Grimes gained several places. It's the white one with the blue stripe in about 10th place, but up front, brilliant start from the middle of the front row. So uh, car 99 in to lead this race. Sun getting lower in the sky, but a beautiful day. And St. Perez has already gained one position. That's the championship leader from fourth up to third. It's going to be very, very interesting to see who can make the impact, who is going to be quick there. Oliver Webb looking good as well in the 777 entry all over the back now. And wonderful rotation of the cars as we make our way through St. Mary's for the first time. We climb the hill. It only looks a minor incline, but you certainly feel it. And we're battling for the lead immediately here. 99 got a great start and uh, 99 is holding on to it. But only for now, it looks like there is going to be an opportunity for Oliver Webb in a few moments time. Certainly is, I noticed by the time the cars got to St Mary's there might have been a slight incident at Ford Water because we got about the first half of the field, then a gap, then the second half nose to tail, but up front it's as tight as you'd like, going down that brilliant start from the middle of the front row, car 99 leads down into the first corner, a bit of corner cutting halfway down the run towards Woodcut but they keep it on the black stuff, but only just. And that's a move for the lead and that would have been a sensational one of that, that would be one that Oliver Webb would want to see back he has managed to fight his way to the front of the field and the driver that lined up in fifth position on the grid leads us over the line into lap two on this 45 minute race where you must use two drivers and that's a tight squeeze for the 77 who is shown the inside of the door handle heading in to turn one at Matchwick. Well, very, very tight indeed. I think it's Matt Home on board number nine, trying his utmost and uh, going very, very wide in the background. Number three, 73, that's the Rory Butcher. Car shared with uh, Paul, uh, William Paul there, but he got it back on the black stuff. See what I mean about that gap? And then in the background, someone else has gone for a big one. That was the car that started stone last, car number 52, and a, a flame from the tail. Like that's just fuel, unburnt fuel in the exhaust pipe there. That's the car shared by uh, Christian Cole, England, and Johnny Molam. Round it went, and I feel we may be having a safety car coming out with that sitting by the side of the circuit. Yeah, big hit there, big hit for the 52, continuing to race at the moment, but I wonder for how much longer 99 continues to hold the lead. No, in second place he was passed to look oh, how yes, far Oliver Webb is now, yeah. has, has waved goodbye, he he's promises he'll send them a postcard, but he's off in the lead of this race, but I do think the safety car, yes, the safety car now confirmed as being brought out, no surprise, so Oli Webb, brilliant move to take the lead into Woodcut at the end of the opening lap, but they are going to come up onto your tail when you abate your pace behind the safety car, but... Uh, I thought it was almost too good to, tr to be true to get the whole lot, 30 of these competitive races in these 901 and 911 portions. Have they got the message there? They're going to have to swap them back around because the safety car is out. So the uh, number nine entry will have to see back that place because that was overtaking under the safety car. I think the flags are fairly clearly displayed on the main straight. And we are awaiting the safety car. Yeah, there it's, it is. it's now there. The E-Type Jaguar will... Uh, So, cars all running, they'll form up in line astern form. Okay, all behind the safety car, it was the 52 that was off, and the 52 that was uh, being driven by Richard Tuthill, who went round and heavily into the barriers. So this was Ollie Webb sprinting clear, and uh, one, it feels like the aggression was dialed up. Look further back in your shot, because that is where the crash is gonna happen, and that is the end of the race. Big moment into the barrier. Beautiful car in need of repair. Yeah, but the tire wall did exactly what the tire wall needed to do. It sucked up so much of that momentum. The car was spun around several times, and it's always sad to see a car, a beautiful car like this, that has been damaged. But the best thing there is seeing a driver hopping out. That's in slow mo. And of course, got quite glad to be down on the firm stuff. Uh, and that would have uh, certainly got the gyros internal gyroscope spinning around. But uh, good to see driver okay. Yeah, that's the most important thing when you have an impact like that and uh, left to ponder things, but most importantly, out of the car. And that was Richard uh, Tuthill, who was out and OK. So we had a change of lead and it was going to have to be a mighty move around the outside. And it appears that it was from miles back heading in to Woodcote Corner. At this stage, you'd never think it was on. Take the long way round and take the long way round in style for Ollie Webb, who is going to put one of the moves of the day on and 
somehow avoid contact. How about it? Well, that was quite extraordinary. The James Court thought Phil Quave car. We can't confirm who's started that car. Maybe being just a little bit cautious, but Oli Brev at Webb had obviously swallowed all the brave pills and around the outside, a, a route that has, how should we describe it, diminishing returns on so many occasions. Uh, definitely true. Definitely true. But a great move, worthy of taking the lead. I still think they need to swap around. Uh, I still think that number nine took that position under the safety car, so I think they're going to have to swap them back around. There's no need for a penalty there, but like they should swap them around before we get to the restart order. Some beautiful cars in the field, lots of entertainment. Uh, big crash behind the safety car means that we're going to have to fully recover the uh, 52, the uh, 911 from 1965 uh, that went into the barriers on the opening tour. Yeah, it's a shame because uh, certainly uh, the Tuttle car, Richard Tuttle car, had been making up great ground, having started uh, stone last on the grid, had certainly worked its way up the order very tidily indeed, but alas, with that tumble. We also saw the Nigel Green, saw Tarek Mahmoud, Mahmoud car fail to start the race, car number 59, and another one that is in, one that's in the pits is the Nick Manassian car, car number 60, which he's sharing with Kyle Tilly. That's a shame. So I didn't see what was untoward with that. And I'll have a look in the pit lane. Can't quite spot it beneath us uh, in the shadow. OK, so 38 minutes to go. Uh, we are circulating behind the safety car. All the drivers still have to make a mandatory pit stop. And then uh, we will see how it shakes out. We've had a great move for the lead. We've had an illegal move for second place behind the safety car. This was the start, though, Bruce. Absolutely brilliant. It looks like the first two cars have got away absolutely perfectly. But then suddenly by the time you got down to Madgwick, it was a real case of uh, the second gear change was the, very, the, the better one. And that put the car from the middle of the front road into the lead. This is going on board with uh, Mark Webber's car. And I spotted it gain several positions. That's great. Going on the pit wall side, past the end of the pit wall, past pit out. And this is the view going down into Madgwick, looking for space. Drifting sideways, working the wheel, but certainly a couple of places going. This is uh, with Max Chilton from further down the order. So a lot of cars to overtake, and that's precisely what he's there to do. But it's about getting through the gears cleanly, tidy. Lost one position, two position. In fact, he's doing the reverse of gaining places. But you could be sure when they get into the first quarter, the positions will be picked back. Two driver race, 45 minutes. We've got this moment now behind the safety car for those early. That brilliant onboard footage. I'm liking the uh, stopwatch on the steering wheel as well. Interesting that that has been attached. And uh, just uh, just to let you know, of course, it was Bonamy Grimes who was starting the car he's sharing with Mark Webber. That was the second of the onboard camera footage. That's car 116. So uh, drivers are pressing on, but the driver leading the race, it's car treble seven and it's Ollie Webb. We sort of detected that from the driving style with that brilliant move. And again, looking at the, the replay of the start from the outside, it was a nip and tuck. And a few people sort of put their noses forward and then put them back in again just in case. But, you know, all very, very clean indeed as they went round the first corner. Yeah, unfortunately not staying that way for the 52 entry. But thankfully, Richard Tuthill is OK and out of the car. So just to give you an update of who's in the cars, because we were waiting for confirmation of who's in what. Uh, Matt Neal is in the 27 car. Uh, he's one to look out for. And uh, Bonamy Grimes is in the car that Mark Webber will pilot later on. And that is it's a sad old sight. You never want to see beautiful cars in a damaged state. But unfortunately, that's what's happened to the 52 entry, which is being wheeled away by the uh, brilliant team of marshals that we have all around this circuit, making us able to go to the revival. Uh, and, uh, and that car will need quite a lot of attention. It will be reputable, but not in time for the remainder of this race. Of course, 45 minutes all in, and it's always, just as often, making rebuilding the tyre wall that uh, takes the time. We've seen the marshals and the rescue crews very quickly have hooked up Richard Tuttle's car. They've put it to a place of safety on the infield. Of course, that accident, uh, you know, really shook everything up. But they, are, the marshals are all trained. They have to know where the point is to put a car that's had a technical problem. Sometimes the drivers know full well and they've worked out on their track walk or bicycle ride or whatever where they can put a car. Because we all know that cars can break, but you just don't want to have a race having to be stopped because they've been parked somewhere far from a gap. But okay. let's go down to Ed Turner because he's got Johnny Molum down with him and his car was uh, right in the thick of the action at the start.
Johnny, uh, I don't know what's worse, being out there when something like this happens or stood watching from the pits. Um, it's a very good point, actually. I mean, Christian did a really good first ever standing start, so he did well. He dropped a little bit, got back up. But I feel for Richard Tuthill to have that happen. It's a, we had a situation yesterday in qualifying where the car jumped out of gear going into some, uh, no name, I think it is, and the car just literally lost all engine braking and just went straight off. So I don't know what happened with Richard, uh, but I feel I, my heart goes out to anyone that goes and visits the barriers here because this is a very unforgiving place. And I, I say an early safety car like this, this is going to give the advantage to teams that basically have their second driver as the fastest driver. Driver, isn't it? Yes. Um, having said that, Christian Cole, my teammate, we, we were always going to start him regardless because uh, it's his first revival. He's absolutely, you saw him yesterday, he's buzzing, absolutely loving the experience. And I have to say this, every time I come here, I'm in my first revival, my first members meeting earlier this year when I saw you on the grid doing the demo with the Celine GT1, just never ceases to amaze me what an amazing event this is and how everyone embraces it. It's fantastic. And uh, I'm just looking forward to getting in and hopefully maybe uh, keeping on the good work that Christian's doing. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Mark Webber said to me already he's going to see me out there, so we'll hopefully not in too close contact. You're saying your teammate's very enthusiastic. I think you are as well, Johnny. The, um, what's, the, what's the plan? Are you getting in early or late in the pit window? We're going to give Christian... We're not going to sort of duck in the first minute, you know, that it opens. We'll probably give him a lap after that and then bring him in. It, play, it, play it by a little bit. Obviously, the, the risk is if, um, if you come in... Um, if you don't come in early and there's another safety car then and you've already pitted or you haven't pitted, then you, you have a huge disadvantage. So you can't pit under a safety car. Those are the rules. But if you were to come in early in the window and then after that there's a safety car and you haven't pitted early in the window and you could have done that's a big disadvantage so we won't be waiting too long you must have a man cleverer than you working all this out oh god yes <laughs> cheers johnny thank you very much thank you okay good to hear from johnny Merlin and ed asking the questions as ever down there looks a nice place to watch the race from Yes, sometimes uh, a lot of people are envious of our position in the commentary box, but there are certain times with a cooling drink watching a, a field as competitive as this. We're waiting for any message about any extra time that may be added to this race. In earlier races, if there was a safety car, dollops of three minutes were added, and it allowed us to get uh, the race to the conclusion. This is a far longer race. 45 minutes is planned, so hopefully um, we will be able to run to the 45 minutes without having to add extra time. But we'll let you know as soon as we know. But what we know, the move of the race confirmation coming through right now we will be having three minutes added but just going back to the point the move of the race so far by a country mile to ollie webb down into woodcut around the outside both alex and i breathed a, a big breath in but he held on to it and, and went into the lead out, around the side of the 99 car i still can't tell you who is actually driving that whether it's uh, who started it james thorpe or phil quaif but uh, certainly it was a great move to take the lead and then shortly after that of course we had richard tuttle going off and that brought out the safety car. We can't tell you how long it's going to be. We can tell you the race uh, duration has gone out to 48 minutes all in. But we have that driver change to be made uh, partway through the race. And good point made by Johnny Molan, well, made to him by Ed Foster, is the do you put your faster driver in for the first part of the race or the second part? It's all about, and you know this for well from Formula 1, not that you change drivers in that, but how you split your tyre tactics and when, when you think is the moment you're going to get the most out of them. But if you think the second stint of the race is the one where it's less likely to have drivers going off that, that's really when you ought to put your drivers in. But the flip side of that is at the start of the race, a, a pro driver, if you will, a more experienced one, can gain more places for you. OK, let's go downstairs. Max Chilton is speaking to Ed once again. Max, um, well, I'm looking relaxed. Uh, you were just looking at sort of replays on your phone. Uh, it's, it amazes me how relaxed you professional drivers are before jumping in. Well, as long as it looks that way, that's the main thing. I'm, I'm, I'm probably quite nervous. I've only driven this car for four laps, um, but... It's going to be brilliant. I, d I did the four laps yesterday, just getting up to speed before we had a bit of an engine problem, and it's an absolute pure joy. I've always watched here for so many years, the cars drifting, and the, you can just see the hands of the driver from in the grandstands watching the drivers correct the car. So to be in one where you're constantly dancing is a pleasure. So hopefully I'll get a nice run out um, to finish this race off. Um, but a magical moment to get a call from Porsche on Thursday saying, do you want to drive our car? So I was absolutely, yeah, straight away. You say you've only done four laps, but I think you only did four runs up the Festival Speed Hill in the McMurtry before you break the record. That's true. You're expecting me to break a lap record then this afternoon? Well, I'm not demanding it, but at least try. OK, I, okay I'll try my best, but at the moment we're quite a long way off, so I'll enjoy the moment. It, the, Goodwood was made for days like this. The weather's fantastic. The crowds just get bigger and bigger. 
and the racing's just so pure. I mean, you just watch these cars drifting side by side. You can see the drivers really working it. Um, it's just so rare. When do you race period cars on a period track? The track hasn't changed. The cars have... Might, OK, we might have a bit more horsepower, but apart from that, they're, they're, they're the same. That's fantastic. I'll, I'll leave you to your pre-race meditation. Cool. Thank you very much. Excellent stuff. Good to hear from Max Chilton down there in the pits. Uh, slightly nervous after only four laps behind the wheel. Loving the honesty down there. He's not wrong, though, about Goodwood being made for days like this. We have a wonderful vantage point up in the commentary box. There's Bonamy Grimes in the 116 entry and uh, still circulating behind the safety car. So we've got this extended safety car due to the barrier repair caused after the 52 unfortunately went in to the barrier. There is a live look at the uh, rapid barrier pair. I've got to say, they've, they've worked really quickly to get that belt back across and the tyres all rearranged. So many logistical things you have to think about for a race meeting, but the ability to get a tyre stack into place We've seen many circuits where they fumbled. I take my metaphorical hat off. That was a very, very quick repair. Let's hope that's not required again. But again, those tyres that stacks, the replacement ones, already had to be loaded into a trailer and then got there as quickly as possible with the uh, early Land Rovers doing a great job as well. So calm before the storm, but storm it most certainly will be when we get going racing again in the Ford Water Trophy. Great cars, so dynamic, the Porsche 901s and 911. But down in the pits is Ed Foster working very hard with the Duke of Richmond's son, Charlie March. Jolly, uh, tricky day yesterday, a few problems in qualifying. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a, a bit unfortunate. It was just a mechanical failure and the engine decided to give up. So we only managed one flying lap and started at the back of the grid today, but hopefully you have a good race once the safety car comes in. Brand new engine, so you'll be flying through the field. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. We haven't, we haven't tried it out at all. So, you know, you get a good one or a bad one, we're not really sure yet. It's a bit of a voyage of discovery, isn't it? You know, you're driving seconds, you, literally one lap in the car yesterday. Have you tested it? I managed to do an hour during uh, Glorious Goodwood, so I got an hour before we went horse racing, but uh, that, that was all I got in the car. But it was great. It was really fun. To be honest, an hour is actually doing pretty well. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was, a, it was a, an interesting time because it was rain in and out, and these little Dunlop tyres are uh, pretty hairy at the best of times. So. What's the plan? Are you going to get in early or late? Uh, I think we're just going to roughly do 50-50 and take it pretty easily, so we'll see what happens. All right, best of luck. Thank you so much. 44, the car on the screen, is the car that uh, Charlie will be taking over later from James Turner, the mover and shaker. Uh, in so many Porsche racing circles, fabulous race livery, I must say. It really takes it right back to the mid-60s in terms of fashion. Yeah, easy to spot. There's a lot of great liveries out there. Uh, a little bit of acknowledgement uh, from behind the wheel. And, uh, and Turner continues on behind the safety car. Extended break that we hope is coming to a, a close. We have added three minutes to the time for the race. This has turned into a 48-minute race. And you must use both drivers. Uh, we've got a few 901s in there, but uh, the majority are 911s officially from uh, 19, uh, the 1960s. Uh, 65, 64, 66 on, yeah. my, uh, on my page. Yes, yeah, the effective divide is the three 901s in this race were built in 1964, and all the remainder, the other 27 cars, are all 911s from 1965 and 1966. Body shape completely door very soon after the Porsche 911, or 901, as we've been explaining, was introduced. But uh, the drivers love racing them because they have a bit of a reputation. That short wheelbase was very, very twisty, but it, uh, twitchy, but if you got it right, the reward, reward was fabulous. We've been talking today a lot about uh, steering cars on the throttle, and the 911 was very much a car that required that treatment. It was very encouraged to see the vehicles moving away from the tyre barrier, where we had uh, the accident that brought out this safety car. Drive is OK, which is the most important thing. Uh, car's going to need uh, some uh, repairs, and it uh, won't be able to take any further part in the weekend. And there is the Land Rover at the rear of the field, and there's the second one, and there's the Mini. So I think we're just a few moments away from getting the signal to go racing once again. And here is our race leader, Ollie Webb. Ollie Webb, and you can see various points on the circuit where their face is full of sunshine. Not always a good thing when you're trying to pick, pick out that uh, point where you either break or the point where it's just past the point where you should have broken, done the braking and you're arriving at Ford Water. But uh, so many markers drivers try, try to find, but experience on this circuit, it's always great. But I always remember um, Jackie Stewart, we had that lovely tribute for his third world championship earlier today, where on the Nürburgring Nord Schleifer, his senses were so heightened by the fear of competing there he thought it was being an incident. He smelt cut grass and someone had just spun over a brow. Wow. And that level 
of intellect and the, the reflexes and the reaction. So I'm not saying everyone has to be able to spell cut grass when it's been cut from a 30 pace and you're doing 120 miles an hour, but it helps. <laughs> it really does. Also helps to have Sir Jackie Stewart's talent behind the wheel. That's fairly useful as well. Um, OK, uh, the lights are off, I believe. Let's have another look. Yeah, lights are off. And we are ready to go back racing once again. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, your reward is going to be action all the way, I fancy. We've still got to have the mandatory stop as well. Uh, so some entries, they would have changed things. Uh, you can see the uh, 116s missing a, a headlight after uh, contact in the uh, final stages of the circuit here last time. And I tell you what, Oliver Webb has gone very early and he's timed that brilliantly. He's caught them napping behind and he's on his way. Well, it's a classic case. Of course, uh, the driver and the leader of the pack can dictate when they floor the throttle. He did it very early. And car in the background already pitting. That was 99 that started from the middle of the front row. Now, to my eye, that should be... Is that just with the pit window open or is that a problem? I think uh, it might be a technical problem. So very disappointed. But the first two cars, you talk about West Sussex, East Sussex. That's about <laughs> the divide between them and the rest. But behind, of course, three cars. No to tell. Four cars, five cars. No to tell. Yeah, very aggressive as you're looking... Uh, through the order there of the uh, 411, getting very racy. Car number 100, that's the car being driven by Juan Pablo Orcuela, and that will be taken over by Emanuele Pirro. We often talk in the two-driver race about it's the balance, the aggregate speed between your drivers, and uh, certainly Juan Pablo doing a very good job, but he's left the door half open. <laughs> well, a little look there from Seb Perez, but he pulled his nose back out, but uh, Emanuele Pirro will be enjoying that. We've got a little bit of caution. Oh, he's really enjoying it earlier on in the Ferrari 250 and we will see him in this race later on as well. All these cars on sustainable fuel uh, all over the road there. Looks like we caught the end of something for the 23 of Smalling behind the wheel uh, as he was recovering after dipping at least a couple of wheels off the road. And it just goes to prove if you lose your momentum, it takes a while to get it back up. These aren't the world's most powerful cars. And just like the Formula Juniors, it, you know, totally different in terms of appearance. But it's about keeping that momentum. So where did it go wrong for Adam Smalley? Well, the entrance to St Mary's at that point, he thinks, oh, I didn't need to go to an agricultural college in Sirencester. Farming is not for me. And back onto the black stuff for him. But uh, Adam is an absolute expert in modern Porsche. So I think that helps in quite a big way. And he did well to make sure that wasn't a far bigger moment. Uh, we come back across the line, and uh, this is now the uh, battle for second position then, as we're getting drivers cycled through. The pit window is now open, uh, so this is now the battle for second. Juan Pablo continuing to lead this uh, furious battle. 25 minutes to go, and uh, still Oli Webb continues out front. Well, I must say, the pace we're seeing from Juan Pablo Orella, very, very quick indeed. First couple of uh, regular pit visitors in. We had 99 coming in. Andrew Jordan uh, in the car that started uh, right on pole position. Lost about four positions on the opening lap, but he's in the pit, so very quick changeover. Well, that is going to be really interesting to see. Uh, Andrew Jordan now in the car, and he was just so at ease when we saw him behind the wheel of it in qualifying yesterday. OK, so we just commented earlier, Alex, about whether you put your faster driver in your pairing in first or second, and clearly they decided in their case, put him in second, and there is Andrew Jordan, car number nine, coming out. He will be given the maximum amount of time that he can to make an attack, and likewise, 99 into the pits and out of the pits, so one would think... We need double check, but I think that was uh, James Thorpe handing over to Phil Quaid, probably in that. So they've taken the early tactic. Two abreast, how do you like that? Coming up shortly. Well, it's very, very close. Seb Perez all over the back, trying to find the move through. And these three have been putting on a really entertaining battle all the while, though. The 99 came in and changed, uh, and that was not a mechanical issue, but we didn't see the message that the pit window was immediately open. So we'll have to check whether that uh, stop was within the rules. We continue to go side by side, struggling to scot the speed off as we went into match with corner. Well, the driver making the moves has been De David Ze Zevelbirken. He was at the back of this grouping in the, in the dark green car. He just went to the front fleetingly, now back to third. And Shaking of the finger from uh, Seb Perez, perhaps thinking, um, I didn't quite like that move, or well done, it's more rather. That was excellent stuff to fight his way by there. And they are pointing to launch another attack, suddenly. Perez is coming alive here, knowing that this is the crucial pit stop sequence, knowing that you've got to try and gain as much as possible. 
23 and a half minutes remaining on a 45 minute race it became a 48 minute race I don't like the look of that hand across that uh, to Adam Smalley climbing out no it's Chilton uh, climbing out and that was the hand across it is Adam Smalley so that's car 23 we did see it have its off track moment didn't we yeah Max Chilton uh having a debrief before jumping in the car. Good run now, this, the 77 of Seb Perez, who is fighting his way past. That's the second car he's passed on this lap. He is having a terrific run this time around, and he's up to second place. Yeah, think about that, though. Seb Perez has been up and down the order, sort of in the top six, from six, up to third, down to sixth again. He's got the pace. I think he's just had a couple of moments, a couple of uh, maybe slight mistakes, but clearly when he keeps it where he wants it, he's very, very quick. But Ollie Webb still leading this race. Last time around, he was beating uh, the car 100, but now it's going to be 77, as you say, up into second place. So Seb Perez up into second, car 100, Ocoela into third, and David Bertelbergen is uh, right on his tail in fourth place in 4.11. So in comes uh, the car of Bonamy Grimes, nine-time Grand Prix winner Mark Webber, standing by, ready to get behind the wheel of a car in a race. He hasn't had this feeling for a long time. Here is the Australian driver who is getting strapped into the car and it's going to be great to see him in competition once again. Of course, uh, alongside his Formula 1 career towards the end, he was racing uh, in Porsches uh, in the World Endurance Championship. So accustomed to getting into a car that someone else has just vacated. And it is quite a skill. And being a tall driver as well, that makes it all the harder for him to get his limbs in place, not lose the belts behind his back and all those things that then delay your pit stop. So a chance to fight for a good finish as well. And into the narrow fast lane of the pit lane and pull down on the belts. It's a confidence thing, isn't it? It's the yeah. last thing you do before you get out to the track. So the, the little bit of damage on the front right corner uh, is from yesterday, but it's not really affecting the aerodynamics too much. Or was it on the run to the first corner? Because certainly you saw lots of places being gained by Bonamy Grimes in 116. But uh, now it's Mark racing again. Great to see. Excellent to see Mark Webber attacking a racetrack in anger once more. 21 minutes to go, and everyone inside the top 15 has got to make their mandatory stop. Everyone inside the top 15 has still got to change driver. Right, now bear in mind that uh, the two early stoppers were 9 and 99, and the driver of 9 who took over from Matt home is Andrew Jordan, who banged in last round the fastest lap of the race. More to follow, I'm absolutely sure about this, but uh, it looks like a clever tactic. And for Seb Perez in 77, he's maximising his time in the car before he hands it over and he's absolutely flying he's got clear of that traffic that's Porsche perfection this is going to be really really intriguing to see whether that early change to Andrew Jordan is able to vault him to the head of the field last time around he did a 133.7 and he and the leader Ollie Webb who's been going really well driving brilliantly did a 135.5 and they will all be aware of the threat that Andrew Jordan poses behind the wheel. But I think what Ollie Webb is going to do, he's going to stay out as long as he can to right up before the pit window closes and then hand over to Guy Ziza in that car. So the treble seven is going to keep pressing on, but certainly he'll be getting information coming from his pit crew unless they want to keep him cool, calm and collected by not letting him know that the pace that Andrew Jordan is setting in number nine is absolutely electric. Car 100 in third place, Juan Pablo Oruela, he's got Emanuele Perro. That's not a bad person to get in second, to get in second. Emanuele would be hoping this is rather cooler than the uh, Ferrari he raced earlier where he said there was no insulation when he came into lunch. He was very hot. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and it's pretty hot in the driver's club as well, so he, he can't get any escape from the heat. The British late summer providing us with a great day and the Goodwood Revival providing us with a great race now as uh, we've just settled into a rhythm. We're looking further in the pack now. This is the uh, 69 entry attacking. Well, I'll tell you, several positions further forward. We talked about Jensen Button starting. Was it 18th or 19th? His car is up into sixth place. He hasn't gained all those positions because quite a few cars have made a pit stop, but certainly it's going in the right direction. Car number 88, again, just the tail end of the top, top 10. And, uh, whether it's Steve Osborne or Chris Ward aboard that, but lots of good little scraps. But our race leader, Treble 7, Ollie Webb, pressing on as long as he possibly can. Still says three words at the bottom of our screen, pit window open. If it still says pit, if it says pit window but then closed, there'll be trouble afoot. There would be. There would be out there. Uh, still, we're seeing uh, 
Paris has come into the pits. So Paris, said Paris, great stint. Uh, he got up, he got up to uh, a strong position, but now he's come in for his mandatory stop. So it's Gamble's time behind the wheel, and that is the first of the major runners to make their way through. By the way, Andrew Jordan, another fastest lap of the race, a 133.2. Last time around, Ollie Webb out front in the triple seven, a 134.9. And those were both personal bests. One just happens to be the fastest lap of the race. Watch out for car number nine. Yeah, and the ominous thing for all rivals is that uh, Andrew Jordan, he just took another half second off between his first flying lap out of the pits and the second. But they've also put the car out into clean air. There's so many considerations. Oh, Wally Webb nearly, uh, well, he was grass cutting on the exit of the chicane. Thumb up, no, that's fine. I meant to do that. Yeah, yeah, sure you did. <laughs> There's the acknowledgement, not long left now of his stint. Shows you how hard he's pushing, shows you that he knows he's under pressure. Here's Mark Webber behind the wheel of a Porsche once again. That sentence was true in the World Endurance Championship. It's true in the Ford Water Trophy. Yeah, at the moment he's running in 12th place. We've still got probably about six cars ahead of him that have to pit, maybe five. But basically, from where this started with uh, Bonamy Grimes, it has worked its way forward place by place. But now, all that muscle memory surely is coming back. And uh, being a driver who's driven an awful lot of Porsches, a uh, Porsche representative and ambassador, you know, he knows these cars, he knows the layout, but he won't have driven one this early. But you know what? When you've got it, you've got it. And Mark's always famous for adapting very quickly to cars. He's just brushed the indicator, which is flashing along. That side of the car has, uh, has provided quite a lot to remark upon this weekend. So, again, we're talking about uh, being a taller driver. It's not always easy to get into a car, and he may well have grazed that during the pit stop. Just, in fact, being confirmed that, yes, it's been going since the pit stop. He doesn't actually want to indicate to come in. He's just showing off, frankly, but uh, going increasingly well, Mark Webber. Mark Webber, who has brought Oscar Piastri through into Formula One, who manages him, along with his wife Anne, and I imagine Oscar's going to be looking at this, going, right, I'm taking notes, I'm giving you feedback at the end of the day. I think, I think Oscar Piastri's going to be taking notes, thinking, when can I get a drive here? When you've retired from your Formula One career will be uh, the mentor's answer, I think. Don't nick my drives. Yeah. We'll see you in a decade and a bit then, Oscar Piastri, uh, who has established himself. Ah, in comes the leader, Oli Webb then. The thumbs up last time around, indicating that it's time for the pit stop next. And this is a crucial change. Over to you, Mr. Gamble. No, not Mr. Gamble. Who's, uh, who's jumping in for Oli Webb? Oli Webb is Guy Ziza. Yes, Guy Ziza now, ready to take the wheel of the car. Personalised number plate there, vanity plate, GRZ. <laughs> One for one. I really do love that dark green livery aboard, but that was a very impressive opening stint from Ollie Webb. But all along, the lap times are getting quicker and quicker. Another lap in the 133s from Andrew Jordan. He's up to fourth place overall, but uh, with those ahead needing to make their pit stops, one has yet to come in, but 777 is in stationary in the pit stop. David Bergen has come in in 411, waiting for 87 as well, which is Michael Blakemolen, fleetingly a Grand Prix driver in the mid 1970s, to come in and complete. Make it for it. But there is the leader, car number nine, streaking through 99. The two cars that pitted really early, Alex. Yeah. It's worked for them. They've put their quicker driver in second and their first and second as the others come out into third place. But only for a nanosecond goes uh, Guy Ziza. The car that was third in fourth is now third because 77 is coming through with George Gamble adapting very quickly indeed. They came in the reversed order on the same lap, but just quickly out of the pits and 77 is head of 77777. <laughs> Easy for you to say. And uh, uh, Gamble now goes past. But that's a change of lead then. That is a significant moment. And Andrew Jordan's electrifying pace. Like, a, a, just wonderful to watch him. Just at one with this car. And this is a, a real treat now. He's, walked his, he's worked his way to the head of the field. And the car that was at the front a long time ago has finally worked their way back there. And the 911 from 1965 is streaking clear. And a quick pronunciation check. We've been banging on. Thank you very much, Marcus Pye. Guy Zizer is not, it's Guy Zizer because uh, Marcus said he told me himself and from the horse's <laughs> mouth we will take it but uh, he's up at the sharp end of the field in fourth place overall and George Gamble just passed him as they came out of the pits there, fourth and third, the first two it's 9 and 99, it's Andrew Jordan setting an electric pace, 1 minute 33, 1 minute 33 in car number 9, just not quite as fast a driver who went second in 99, we think it's Phil Quaif in second, 1 minute 34 flat, so second quickest driver in the pack at the moment.
No one's got an answer to Andrew Jordan out front at the moment. It's 2.7 seconds. It was two seconds last time around. He's in a league of his own. And that must have been another brush at the pit stop because his indicator is going as well. Either way. Uh, so Gamble behind the wheel. Uh, Andrew Jordan behind the wheel. Then we believe it's Quaid in second place. Then it's Gamble and it's Zizza in fourth. And uh, the top five completed by the Butcher Paul entry. And in fact, the fact that uh, an awful lot of our timing screen has got the last lap as being the fastest lap means a lot of the crews did put their faster driver in second. So uh, all the pit stops are complete. One. Once, no, no, but that only has. The Bailey Bailey car has uh, not served its pit stop. Pit window's still open, though, so uh, they can do what they wish. That's Marshall Bailey and Tim Bailey, but they weren't among the quick runners. All the quick runners have made their stops. But what we need to know is nine is leading from 99, so it's uh, Andrew Jordan setting electric laps, a new fastest lap of the race. 1 minute 33.1 last time around for Andrew Jordan. That puts him 2.7 seconds clear of Phil Quaife in 99. 12 minutes ago, we've seen lots of late twists all the way through today. We've seen things be in the balance right until the end, time and time again. This is the Smith and Brian entry. This is one of our 901s in the field. And just looking down the times of those at the front end of the field, Guy Zizza, we mentioned, took over from Ollie Webb. He, unfortunately, is not lapping at the, the pace that Ollie was. Well, that wasn't to be expected, but anyhow, he's in fourth place at the moment in the treble seven, but I'm afraid that is going to be one that does start to go in the opposite direction to progress. Yeah, definitely a chance for plenty out there to uh, to gain on, uh, yeah, I think uh, Butcher and Paul and uh, Mark Webber will be fancying an improvement. Uh, Webber currently running in sixth position. Uh, will have their attentions on the triple seven entry. Now let's go back now. This is uh, further back. And the 88 is taking a slightly longer route around. Not the only one. Bit of uh, late evening grass trimming going on there but everyone able to uh, recover to it the 411 in the background so many times when someone goes off at st mary's the person in behind is so busy admiring their craft as they uh, try and cut grooves through the grass that they just leave their own braking a little too late and frequently actually it's just a patch of something a little bit slippery at the point at which they really required maximum adhesion but the person who seems to have adhesion wherever he wants whether his indicators are on or not it doesn't matter but leading the race by uh, nearly four seconds now andrew jordan lap after lap and the difference between one lap and the next with him is normally only about a tenth of a second he is on it action further back in the pack here and this is uh making that, that, through i think it's molem isn't yeah it? J jmo jmo's taken over from christian colling who had that little little bouncy moment but in 53 John, johnny molem pressing on very nicely indeed into that little compression when you leave st mary's and up the rise into the shade welcome shade fleetingly and into the breaking point for the first first part of lap corner Good to check in. Very distinctive livery, and there's a lot out there. But the uh, shell livery on that car uh, making its way round. It's now a 5.8 second gap at the head of the field. Uh, Andrew Jordan doesn't want this race to end. He's having so much fun behind the wheel. We're checking in once again with Mark Webber. We said he was going to be all over the back of the Triple uh, Seven very soon, and I believe he is right about now. And it's going to be him moving up into the top five. That was his best lap. That, that's slightly slower doing passing. 1 minute 35.8 that time around. But Carl 116 with Mark Webber on board. His racing return, the first one in seven years, sliding beautifully. That wonderful rear shot of the cars going through Magic Corner, now pressing on towards the sunshine. But worse than that, it's towards Fordwater. Such a quick corner. And uh, it's the one that, in so many ways, makes the drivers really focus here at uh, Goodwood. Get it right, you're a hero. Get it wrong, and then you've got to be sorting out your own moment for some distance. Smith and Bryant will try and join this fight as well. Uh, Weber slightly at a restricted pace. Now he's getting into it. He's absolutely launching it through. So we climb the hill, the Exodus of Mary's. Well, well done for picking out Holly Bryant in uh, car number 64 because that is seventh on the track at the moment. But it's the second fastest driver out there. Holly Bryant always so quick in so many things, famously in AC Cody's around here. But so many others besides. So this race far from over, nine and a half minutes remain. But I don't think anyone is going to catch Andrew Jordan leading race but certainly Mark Webber he could gain the four seconds to catch uh, George Gamble let's wait and see but in fact that said last time around Gamble was slightly faster in fourth place we are understandably focusing on the nine-time Grand Prix winner man who contended for the title all the way to the final race of the season 
in 2010, and he is having fun out there. Uh, it's uh, really great to see, but unfortunately that isn't. Off the road goes the 15 and the 22. Yeah, they were running in 14. Well, certainly uh, number 15 with Langlard on board, taking it over from um, Patrick Long, David Danglard, and uh, it was quite hard to see who did what to whom, and number 15 uh, going for the biggest of spins. That was Danglard, 22 as well, rotating around, and that was... Uh, Probably Saif Assam, just trying to double check who started that car. Yeah, Carson the Blank started, so Saif Assam going for a rotazione. And rejoining. We can see the tyre mark on the, yes. the right rear flank of that car. Oh, sorry, the left rear flank from the driver's point of view. Yeah, I get to work on that as soon as it parks up in 8 minutes and 14 seconds time. Uh, it's a great pace being set up. I mean, Andrew Jordan's in a league of his own here. This is a real masterclass. Uh, it's 15 seconds now. Yeah, well, that's quite extraordinary. And I'm trying to debate where exactly the leaders were when those cars went spinning at St Mary's, because certainly if all you have is a, a cloud of tyre smoke, you're necessarily going to come off. Because at that point, you're already committed. You're at the outer bounds of, of, of physics as you try and get between the first part of St Mary's and the second. The last thing you need to do is adapt your line. However, 15 seconds, that is monstrous. Great performance uh, as we look at the 777 under, under threat once again. And... Uh, who's made their way by. This is the 100 that we saw earlier on. Well, that's Emanuele Pirro. He's in 11th yes. place, and surprise, surprise, he's catching the car in front, which is car number 27. And that's uh, Steve Edwards, who took it over after Matt Neal. There's 27 in shot, but Emanuele Pirro hunting it down. No, he's not hunting it down. He's already got past 100 now in front of 27, so up to 10th place. I don't think that's the last of the charge from the flying Emanuele Pirro, the fabulous Roman, who's such a fan of Goodwood, and we in turn are a fan of his. Yeah, earlier on today, he was saying that he, he felt like Lewis Hamilton thanking the fans for this place means a lot to him. OK, message on top of the screen, uh, bottom of the screen. Three cars given a 10-second penalty for pit window infringement. That could be coming in too soon, or it could be staying in for less than minimum time. And one that's involved with that is 99, the car in second place. Remember, 99 came in first. We thought it might have a mechanical problem. Then the pit window opened. Nine was in as well, but nine had waited a further lap. Yeah, so the pit infringement penalties also penalised 65 and 77. 77 is the car that Perez took over from Gamble, and my concept there is their pit stop was under the minimum time because they caught the car in front and came out in a better position. And the third car in that group, in car number 65, also a 10-second penalty for them. That's the one shared by Mark Bates, who started it, and Jensen Button. Yeah, so quite a lot coming through there. Uh, so it's going to be different things. Uh, clearly, car 99 uh, came in a lap too soon before we got the message. OK, and the other thing, it means that 10-second penalty is why suddenly the gap went from 5 seconds advantage for our race leader to 15. Yes. We knew it was a quick lap, but he'd have had to do about 8 quick laps to get in those 10 yeah. seconds. Yeah, so your, your timing page is going to update with the, with the live order uh, as we go through. As, uh, that's going to be the case. So there you go, uh, the Butcher and Paul car now in third place though so that has not applied at the end like you might see in other series that is applied mid-race and uh, updated on the timing page so it goes to prove as commentator you have to look at the moving images as well as the timing screen and all other methods as well but uh, the on-track action speaks for itself but just to see these early 911 short wheelbase format being slid around so beautifully and at the moment uh, Phil Quay pressing on pressing on maybe they don't need to tell him about the penalty he's not going to catch the race leader Andrew Jordan just over five minutes remaining in this Ford Water Cup but uh, just revel in the way these cars move so light on their toes yeah excellent to see as the 99 continues on going past the uh, 44 now Freddie March behind the wheel we spoke to him earlier in the pit lane and uh, making his way by and be loving his time behind the wheel well, considering he's only had an hour driving this car, he's going remarkably well, setting very decent lap times. Car 15's had a bit of an exciting race so far, off at St Mary's not so long ago. And now uh, David Danglard, this case, he wasn't helped off, he went on his own, but has got it back onto the, onto, the, onto the circuit, through the chicane, and will start another lap. But there is our race leader, Andrew Jordan, stretching on. Oh, he's, his pace has fallen away, 1 minute 35.5. No, he's not doing one of those dramatic finishes, is he? Good Lord. <laughs> We've seen plenty of them today. This is going to be the uh, 15 frightening itself off the road. And then frightening itself back onto the road there as the 99 went through. 
Well, you know what? That was a classic case of a driver actually paying attention to his mirrors, spotted the car running in second place coming through and uh, maybe just momentarily missed his braking point, but uh, gathered it up. 27 and 88 fighting for position, trying to get in the top 10. It's uh, car 27 was the one that was uh, the Edwards started bit. by Matt and Steve Edwards, took it over from Matt Neal. At 88, well, that Phil Quaife, the, the gap went out from five seconds to 15. It's now down to 14. But as I said, a slightly slower lap from our race leader. But he's nursing it to the finish. He's just being a little bit cautious among the traffic. But it's been a, a supreme drive. Well, as soon as he got strapped into it, he was lighting up the timing page. And yesterday, when we were enjoying it in practice and qualifying, he was just a master of being able to take it to the limit, but also drifting the car, but always seemingly in control and he has done wonderfully there. Now, we've got a uh, change on our timing page, uh, and we've got Gamble back up to third, but only momentarily. So uh, that is a tiny gap, but that is a gap with a penalty applied of 10 seconds. So that's going to ebb and flow all the way to the end. And the end is coming coming very soon in just as over two minutes. Johnny Molum kicking up the dirt on the outside. He was just trying to work out what those two cars he's trying to lap were doing in front of him. And he's going to try and pick his moment to, to make an advance. So, in fact, no, that's for position. I beg your pardon. He's on yeah. the tail of uh, Guy Zizza. Guy Zizza. And he overtakes him on the run to the first corner. 87 is running in front of him. And that is uh, further down the order. That's a lap further back. And, in fact, that's uh, Michael Blake Molum, the Dutch racer. Of course, father of Jeroen as well and Sebastian, but uh, races almost every weekend. The Blake and Molen family cannot stay away from race circuits. And who can blame them? Johnny Molen, uh, having taken the position, now finds himself uh, getting past the lap car. Uh, he manages to make it through with a tidy pass. Uh, just seeing, so they've got a close uh, battle on the timing page for P3. So they're, they're racing each other in different parts of the circuit after the 10 second time penalty was applied with Gamble trying to get his car onto the rostrum. And we know that Andrew Jordan is just ticking off the minutes and there's not many of them left now. And uh, one to go. Yeah, Andrew Jordan, his pace was lap after lap in the one minute 33. Uh, sector. Then it fell back to 1 minute 35.5. Did he have a problem? No, we're quite sure. It's just a, a little bit of a uh, be careful in traffic. Back down to 1 minute 34 flat. So he's back in the ballpark, controlling it. It's that classic case. If you back off, you're more likely to make a mistake than if you keep, you know, right in your natural form. And certainly Andrew Jordan's form will be delighting Matt Home, who started in car number nine. Didn't make the best getaway from pole. The car lost a few positions, but was still very much in the mix. And by dint of coming in for that very early pit stop, as soon as the pit window was open, picking up no penalties, important element there, um, but has had it under control ever since. We are scrapping all the way to the chequered flag here, and Emanuele Piro is having a great time of things out there at the moment, and he is fighting his way all the way, and we're on lap 24 with the clock about to run out, and one last tour then for Andrew Jordan to take a thoroughly deserved chequered flag after a masterful performance, and his nearest rival got a 10-second time penalty in the pits. And here is the man who is bringing it home, and uh, the clock is going to run out. The clock has gone to zero, and so these are the winning moments, the victory moments for the class of the field, and then some. Car number nine is the one that we're looking for. Headlights flashing, fantastic pace, and Andrew Jordan brings it home. It's victory for Jordan and Holm. Superb stuff. A brilliant, brilliant drive in his Porsche 911 from 1965. And that was one of the most impressive drives of the day. Certainly was some brilliant overtaking manoeuvres early on, but it's about having a really, really strong driver pairing. So Matt Holm did a really good job in the opening, opening stages, and Andrew Jordan did the rest, waiting for second place. It's 99, uh, Quaife and Thorpe, third place at the end, swapping on the final lap with the driver penalty for 77. Of course, uh, that meant Rory Butcher came up to third place, car number 73. It's never over until the chequered flag falls. Yeah.